Okay. So. Right. Let me give you a list really quick. I'll absolutely. tell you who I got. All right. I have Corporal Piper Payne, Corporal Narumi, Corporal Brandon Johnson, Corporal Lenny Skinny, Corporal Tommy Tinker, and Corporal Derek Shin. Those are the only corporals I have. And then two sergeants, which would be Joseph Hawker and Johnny Walker Black. Okay. Um, you know Skinny better than I do, Foo. Right? Yes. What's your opinion on Skinny? I believe he has been trying very hard to do what he feels he needs to do. But you are in what in what regards, Captain? What are you looking for? I just I don't I don't ever talk to him, so I don't want to speak on behalf of, of Skinny if I don't like. I just never see him. Is what I'm trying to say. So I can't oh, sit okay. here and be like he's good or he's bad. I just don't I don't know. The other yeah. one you said Hart. Oh. The first one that you said. Piper Payne. Piper Payne. I don't know why I said Hart. Piper Payne. No idea who the fuck that is. You know who Piper Payne is, Foo? Uh, I do know who she is, yeah. I see her from time to time. I don't think I'm What I does she look like? Her. She's bald. She's bald right now. Over the last two weeks, she's she's worked like an hour or two a day-ish. Oh, this she was on that she shootout. Be, yeah, she was yeah, on she, that she shootout. Might be, I don't know. She might be busy or something. I'm not sure, but she's had a real light couple ships. I like her a lot. Her. Whenever she is around, she does good work. <laughs> Are you trying to who are you trying to get rid of or who you think about getting rid of? Well, almost all of them. <laughs> the problem is I need to have replacements ready to go. Uh, and Lieutenant Fu is saying that a lot of these new people he's got in his program are very what's the Okay, so let me just start from the beginning, okay? There there's 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 different types of people, right? Yep. Got people like Lieutenant Fu, right? Or Officer Haywood, right? Who have this certain personality to them, right? And they yep. can read the room and know a time and place and how you should talk to people individually and talk to them differently depending on- I'm a captain, I'm above all of them. A lot of these corporals don't have it. They don't know that, right? So what they'll do is when somebody fucks up, they'll get the whole scene, they'll bring them into a room and they'll just yell at all of them and tell them it's stupid. <laughs> and that's it. And then they'll send them back out on the road. All that does is one, when they walk out and leave the room, they're like, Man, fuck that dude. That was stupid. That, I didn't do that. I didn't, why am I in trouble? You know what I mean? And two, it makes them not want to listen to what they have to say. So let's use this as an example. I tell somebody, hey, throw that shit in the fucking garbage. And I throw a piece of trash at them. And I'm like, ha, that's a good one for us. I'm going to throw that shit in the garbage, though, because you told me to. Right now, let's say that. Some corporal, let's use uh, Tinker before he kind of reworked how he talked to people. He threw something. Somebody says, hey, go throw that shit in the garbage, right? They wouldn't like that. They'd be like, fuck this. That dude. was pretty damn good. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So that's the problem I'm running into is the perception of these, these NCOs I have. People are not perceiving very well or receiving like the intent of the ncos i agree i agree with that uh, one thousand percent i think that people look at corporals as just another officer that has uh jurisdiction over them i need i'm not saying i need war heroes riding on fucking horseback that can rally the troops right but i need somebody that their peers respect enough to listen to what they have to say mm-hmm and I feel like I don't have that, right? And I don't know if that's because of someone's reputation or if it's just because of how it is perceived when they ask people to do certain things. I think it might be a mixture of both, but I think it's mostly the perception, not any kind of reputation. Yeah. Anyways, no. uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of my dilemma right now, and I don't have any really on the books right now, any on the roster that would fit that bill, and which is nothing against them, and it's nothing against the current NCOs that I have. 
They, I mean, they're good officers. Obviously, they went through my corporal's course. They know exactly what to do. They know how to do it. They were quizzed and tested through. It was like a six hour fucking course with one of the tests being an hour long. So they know what to do and how to handle stuff. They're just, I don't know if they've degraded or if it's just always been that way. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let some of them slide and let them go and then get some new ones in and hopefully. So as of right now, if you are, do you want to say who, who your plan is to let go out of the NCOs? Mm, or you want to hold that? Not yet. Yeah, not that's probably yet, smart. I don't have, I, yeah, I don't have replacements and I don't want, the word getting out and then them changing how yeah, they do it, their jobs. It, yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so. Uh, and on the topic of what, what he was did. saying earlier, uh, we we ran a lot of the new hires through the ringer. So I feel like they're, they're way, I don't want to say more capable. Oh, they're more capable. Like... <laughs> 100%. Are the, all the, the new ones? Oh, the yeah. new officers that we have in, um, I'm just going to be speaking very plainly here. A lot of them are, are as good, if not better, than the officers that we had previously, even today. Good. Yes. They're really, really good. good. Everyone who went through Foo's Academy that I've seen, both cadets and probation officers, they honestly, if I wasn't going over Foo's head by doing it, I'd probably just push them all to full because they're so damn good. I like, think a reason for that is that they've been kept on ice for so long that they're, yep. they're really trying to prove it and let it show, right? A thousand uh, fucking percent. further out of the, out of the shell. With due respect, Captain, the reason why we, we aren't is so to make sure complacency doesn't set in, you know? A hundred percent. Um, I do have a matter I need to discuss with you after this though. Okay. Oh, him and me. Well, uh, with the captain about one of his, uh, the Dean Walker thing. We'll talk about no. it, though. I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that um, is either. So, yeah, I just, I'm trying to get a list from people who work this shift into the uh, rollover of the late NA shift because I don't work this shift very often. Well, um, my. So I need y'all's opinion. Absolutely. I'm bad with remembering names. Um, but the people who I know who do very good work. They are always taking scene lead. They are always stepping up in uh, situations and scenarios. They might not make all the right calls, but they, um, whenever I see them on a scene, I know that it's doing well, right? Yeah, nobody, nobody's perfect. I'm not, exactly. I'm not for, you know, anything perfect like that. I'm just looking for people who, who have the, garnered the respect of their peers and who could be a leader. Yeah. So to, Im to improve morale and enforce the SOPs at the same time instead of lower morale while enforcing the SOPs. Yeah, my, my first pick for uh, that recommendation is definitely Carter. He's, listen, Lincoln Carter, like whenever he's on a scene, I, I mean, he already has the presence of a corporal. He's, a, he's just a standard officer and everyone looks at him as a corporal. You know, he's always running situations. I mean, fuck, he's probably running the PDM right now with, uh, with tarts. So... He does great work. Um, Derek Jones is another one. Jones is a hell of an officer. Um, yeah, Jones and Carter were my uh, yeah. They they're well. fantastic. Jones and Carter, it, fucking this man. Yeah, shot at twenty four seven. That is an actual thirteen alpha. Yeah, they got shot underneath the bridge. Who is it? Uh, it is Sands. He's probably on his bike following somebody and they shot him in an alleyway. Also, you, uh, you've probably already heard, we fired Alana, finally. Uh, well, that was a long time coming. Yeah, I mean, it was, she was, yeah, too much. Um, but when it comes to the corporal rank, those are the two names that come to me instantly is Jones and Carter. Um, now, I, I messaged the chief and he says he's gonna be around soon and when soon is i i do not know but i would like to open up senior officer because like there's names of people who i think are great officers and i think that they you know like for example and i know you i'm gonna say this name you guys are gonna laugh i love tater i think tater encompasses a lot of good uh 
characteristics to him being enjoyable to be around, knowing what to do, how to handle situations, but also doing it the right way. The problem why with Tater is, back, Captain. Yeah, I have I have no issues what? with Tater. Why do you really? Yeah. yeah. Officer. Oh, okay, yeah, sweet. Down. I love I Tater. Like, I like Tater's Tater. the fucking I'm man. I think no, Tater he's, being he's... in any type of leadership role would be fantastic because, again, like he sets the tone for a chase, and he knows what he's doing. You know, I I overlooked Tater. Actually, I'm gonna write him in. And to be honest with you, Fu, he takes out more cadets. I don't want to say that anybody. Carter takes out a shit ton. You, t I mean, everybody takes out a lot of cadets, but. Every single time I see Tater, he has a cadet with him. And he has been working his fucking ass off as an FTO. Working his ass off. He's trying to prove himself. And I've, I'm going to be honest, he's proved himself to me. And he's been around a ton. So I've got Tater Chip, Lincoln Carter, and Derek Jones for this shift. Yep. All right. Well... I mean, this this ain't gonna happen overnight, right? Hundred percent. Maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks. I mean, it could. I mean, I have no idea, right? Because any any of these promotions have to go up through the commissioner's office, as it stands. Um. So once I trim the, it's like the whole steak I have is fat with just one little piece of good meat. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna really scissor this shit up, and That's then fun. have those ready to go. Um, and transition into the new slot. Let's yep. talk about that senior officer rank, Bill. Yeah, I so I, I reached out to Chief. He said that it's something that we are all, you know, us, the commissioner himself, Tarts, get together and establish what exactly we want from a senior officer role, and then you know agree and and continue to to promote off oh. of that. I just don't want this, it to be a rank. Sorry, yeah, first sergeant. I just no, don't want no. it to be a rank where somebody has been around. Like, okay, he's been around quite a while. May as well bring him up. No, uh, for no. this. Go ahead. I, I have a suggestion. Uh, one way, and this is what I was going to do, is these corporals that I removed, um, we could move them to a senior officer position. They are still an officer, and they have no leadership, or like, you know, role or responsibility. However, they have proved that they have the knowledge of someone that is an NCO, right? Because they passed my course. I was going to susuggest that as well. Yeah, and um, I did run that by the commissioner, sent him an email, and he said, yeah. That's awesome. So that's one way, but I don't think that everybody should have to do that to be a senior officer. I, I think there should be, you know, another, you know, another way to do it. Cause I'm, I'm not going to run that many people through fucking my corporal's course because it's a hundred percent and, and this is stupid. Yeah. For me, foo, it wouldn't be a time thing. It wouldn't be like, Hey, you've been an officer for a long time. Here you go. Like, for example, I'll use cue ball, right? Cue ball has had some issues. We've had conversations with them, but you know, hell is cue ball. Um, Prince Prince. Call the fact. Um, All this way. but I've, I've, I've seen him take initiative a lot. Now, do I think he's an NCO? No, I do not. I, I like you ball. He's awesome. I love having him on duty and whenever he is on duty, I'm happy to have him here, but he is not, uh, in my personal opinion at this point in time, uh, ready to do something like that in a leadership role. I just don't think he, like you said, he yeah. just had, just didn't have that personality for it. Right? You, you can be a great cop and be a bad NC. Like it, it doesn't mean you're not a good cop. Just because yep. you're a good cop doesn't mean you're going to be an NCO. Like that's, that's, you know what I mean? And exactly. That's, that's the way it is. So, but you have to be a good cop to be an NCO. Exactly. And for me, um, with the, with, with scenes like, for example, Fu, uh, like a gunfight, right? And I go down, corporal go down. Cause you know, while we're trying to command, we sometimes, I mean, at least I do, I, I'm the guy who likes to go in first and uh, initiate be the tip of the spear. And that's one of my problems because, you know, it's my scene. I'm the first one down. But anyways, what I'm getting at here is, is let's say we all go down, having those senior officer ranks there to still be the, the voice of reason and have some type of seniority to command a scene just by being a part of those scenes more. Does that make sense? Like, it's one thing to have five officers there. It's one thing to have four officers and a senior officer. 
You know, the senior role would just be someone who has proved themselves in the field time and time again, who might not be a leader, but is also understanding enough of scenes that are happening to take lead. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So. Like Sands. Like Sands. Sands is another one. That's a perfect yeah. example. Sands is not a person that I think would be in here leading a meeting, right? But I also mm -hmm. think Sands is somebody who, when he speaks, I listen because I respect his opinion. You know what I mean? Um, and I mean, even Sands, he's been doing a, a great job with the motor shirts and stuff. Uh, but again, not an NCO. Wait, is it? Is he actually doing? Is he is he doing that call? Yeah, he's doing the motor right. the motor search for me, my program. But I have him. He's the FTO in it. Okay. So. But yeah, like I I I really like him for that for that role of senior officer. You know, um. I really like you ball for that role as well. I like um, what's his fucking name? What's that? What's that? Some bitch's name. Always yells when he talks. Doesn't ever carry a phone. Always yells when he talks. Doesn't yeah. Ever carry a always phone. talking about drinking on duty, but he doesn't actually. Oh, 305? No, no, no. Not worldwide. He doesn't come around enough. What's the other name? Duke. Is it Duke? Oh, Dangerfield? Dangerfield. I love Duke, man. I love fight. Duke. I know he's not a leader, <laughs> but I love Duke. He's awesome. Dangerfield is the fucking menace. Dude, like, the fucking fuck. man. Um, but yeah, oh, yeah well. we also have that one cadet. I want to you to keep your eye out on Fu in a good way. He's Walker, the one who right? I hired. Yes, I think yeah. I've seen him in the field. I haven't seen that motherfucker make a mistake yet. He's been quality. Mm -hmm. Every single person that's ridden with him from my standpoint, who, who've talked to me about it just by passing and just being like, yo, this guy's awesome. Everybody loves yeah. him. So the problem is everybody loves him and what they did was they promoted him to probation now wait they already promoted him yeah they i told him not that. to yeah well they did and i demoted him because like i, I made it in big who bold did letters. who did uh johnson who is uh somebody johnson. Where, uh, yeah brandon john one of the corporals i don't even know uh let me see brandon johnson Tried to make it clear, you know, we, we, we agreed to uh, how we were doing things here with uh, with your hires. Now, he very well may be an amazing officer, I'm sure. I'm, I'm for sure he is. But if people want us to know that he is, they need to write notes. hundred. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've told them. That's what, I, that's what I've been fucking telling people, man. Nobody's writing notes on his fucking FTO sheet, Captain. And uh, if, if you look at Dean Walker's notes, look at Dangerfield's. Under Dean Walker. <laughs> look, look, look at his notes. <laughs> Let me see this. It got to be one of the best reports I've ever seen. Let me see. Uh, Dangerfield, Dangerfield. Dangerfield, 6675. Not terrible. <laughs> that's, his, that's his fucking notes, Captain. What am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> Not terrible. Uh, and and if they want if they want him through, I need more context of, of how good he's doing. Woo! You know, I I really I need that documented. Okay, explain to me why he's doing well. That's so funny. <laughs> Not terrible, he says. Not terrible. That's all I have to work with. I mean, do you expect anything else from Dangerfield? No, I don't. That's why when you when you started <laughs> night, it was entertaining. That's awesome. But I, and I've and I've ridden with Walker before. Yeah, I think he's great. But I I just need I need something there. Yeah, especially I hear since you. he was a a direct hire, I skipped academy. I just I just need it there. Oh, 100 percent i mean again I, I don't know if i talked to uh whoever promoted him but all the officers who came up to me is like he's ready i'm like well that's great write your reports and you know he's gonna have to check all the boxes because again he didn't go to academy so i've made yeah. that very very clear at least for the people i've dealt with what i miss nothing no, just no, sorry. just talking about the, the walker thing walker um is this what you need to talk to me about food uh, yeah, so we I'm glad we covered it. That's about it. Uh, uh, so Jones, Carter, and... Um, Tater. Tater. 
And yep. then uh, for, for senior officer, we're considering Saiyans and Prince. Is that what we're talking about here? I do, I do want to put something there uh, to kind of vet a senior officer. I, I nothing agree. Crazy. Nothing, nothing insane, just like, you know, maybe like uh, somebody in command, you know, you just go and they take like a little like quick, like 10, 20 question verbal exam, just something like I, they can assure you, hey, I know when I can throw out spike strips. I know the difference between a 13 Alpha and a 13 Bravo, you know, because they're going to have stripes on their, on their arm, right? So cadets and probies might go ask them things, and I don't want them giving them. Oh, they're still going to be elite. They're still going to be above the general population, so they have to know their shit. Because officers will still turn to them. I mean, I remember whenever I was an officer, and I leaned on a senior officer rank. That's why I learned most of my stuff from was a senior officer. So yeah, I agree with you completely. You know, to be honest with you, I'm surprised you didn't go the NCO route, because you, like you said, the tip of the spear. I'm surprised you'd go like sergeant or something like that. Oh, me? Uh-huh. I like not having to listen to nobody. <laughs> Be honest with you. That's the main thing. You picked a good spot, man. I know. I ain't seen the chief. Where he goes? You on vacation? Yeah. I, I talked to him, man. I don't know where he's been. I think it's election in another place. So that's uh, why he's been, uh, yeah. he's been gone. But, you know, I don't want that role. That's too much. Uh, that's That's too much leadership for me. I've had that role. Yeah, that ain't for me. I like exactly where I'm sitting. You're in the sweet spot, though. A hundred percent. For a year, and I was like, mm, nah. And I moved over to the state police. I don't want to take too much time or too much of your time, Captain. But you have any other names you want to throw in there? I do. I'm, uh, but I'm, I'm blanking out right now. But I'm, I'm gonna do this for you guys. No, there's no, there's no rush. On yeah, no yeah rush. for sure. So you send it, if you, if you see, look, if you see something good or something like that, you just pull me up on your phone. And be like, hey, I saw this, 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 this. Who it was? Cool. I'll start doing that. If I see, if I see people, I'm just gonna start shooting you texts. Same thing if they fucked up. Uh, really, only NCOs is all I care about. How about it's like a somebody going, you know, from officer. Man, I can't believe you brought Derek Jones in here, and that motherfucker just like froze up listen you you might you you have that effect you? on some people wait what happened with jones he brought him in here and the dude was a wet fucking nap listen whenever i talk to jones he's with it you know Isn't that who i running? just recommended as well it is it is <laughs> whenever, whenever <laughs> I, he walked he walked up in here right and he said all right i said uh, you guys into uh, a group uh, uh how you doing that, that, that was it he told me like the same four time, four things over and yeah, over. Listen, you got to understand something. Whenever I first met you, I was the same way. They just don't know you're a big teddy bear. Yeah, you have a way about you. You're like me, but outside the city. You know what I mean? I'm six foot eight. I'm built like a commercial fridge. But once you get to know me, I'm, you know, soft as tacos back fat. Six foot eight is fucking wild. Yeah, I'm a monster. And I feel man. like I tower over my wife at six. Yeah. You're six foot eight. Me, yeah, I'm six foot eight. If we ever talk outside of the city, Captain, we need to take pictures sitting down. <laughs> I told we, you. I told we, you. We gotta sit. We gotta take pictures sitting down. You know what I mean? Well, uh, wait, you, you little man. No I fucking you. way. Uh, I'm fucking, I'm, shut the fuck up, first of all. Just, with, with respect. Come with on, respect. you ain't gonna say it. I'll talk about you. <laughs> Listen, I'm a, I'm a short kid, all right? I'm only five, man, man, all right? Oh, <laughs> Ooh, man, all right i do i do have one thing i do have one one more serious note i want to talk to you guys on mm -hmm. so all right there's a couple of problems we've been running into okay problem number one our containment of the hospital is fucking atrocious all right um i'm just jacks i'm i'm not exaggerating um and we've lost I mean, I people I at the hospital six times in the last two days. No exaggeration. I can clarify something. I think I read an issue was, about uh, this though. So when oh, I was sorry. chief a couple years ago, when I when I was doing chief shit, right? The hospital is a no fucking fly zone. If somebody holds, that's the way it should there, be. If if somebody shoots there, it is no questions asked. They're getting gunned down. Same thing with MRPD, right? Somebody comes in here holding up somebody in front of MRPD and they say, uh, you know, let our friend out of the cells or we're going to shoot him. Yeah, and but that's your friend out there, trade it, and then we'll shoot him as they leave it. And like that's that, how, and that's how I know. Set, yeah. You have to set a precedence 
of people mm-hmm. doing that dumb shit because then it's going to happen every single time. But that's not what's happening. What What's happening is, like, just speaking plainly here, I mean, we're high command. We can operate outside those parameters. It, it, it's one of those things where criminals in this city right now, they do not give a shit about what we have to say at 24 sevens at the hospital at mrpd at bank jobs Mm. it's like for example if i'm if someone is robbing a 24 7 and i'm there that motherfucker is not getting into his vehicle until i instruct him that he can get into his vehicle although he has a hostage that is not his scene it is my scene right our officers do not know how to do that. They do not understand that. Even our NCOs and our sergeants, and sometimes from last night, our lieutenants, <laughs> they they do not understand. And like, for example, what these individuals are doing is they are, there's, you know, cause they have no fear of us as officers. They walk into MR, they walk into the hospital. We have individuals on the bed. They will not stand, right now, Oliver. They will stand right next to that bed. Tell them to get me water. Tell them to get me water. Hey, get Jack some water. Get the first sergeant some water. Uh, yes, they'll sit there and they'll they'll stand right next to the bed. Our officers will be like, hey, don't do that. Hey, don't do that. By the time the officer takes his taser out and tases him, the individual is already uncuffed. Now, yeah, um, go ahead. I, 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 I could tell you, um, I think I know exactly why this is happening, um, is our culture. Right? Yeah, 100%. Is that would be in line but it's not like you would think it would be but it's not right yep. because there is a point where you have to draw a line in the sand you know exactly and we've trained them so much to it's really hard to put this into words i appreciate that let things slide i'm not i'm not i don't want to say let things slide right but hey. not be so focused on getting the arrest right mm-hmm. or or catching the person you know what i mean so for them to be that be beaten into them which we finally gotten to that point where it is but you thinking for the prime that now even some of the leadership is like i don't oh, know how much i can do before i'm i'm looking like that kind of i don't, I, I don't and know that's, and that's I, what I, i'm I bringing like up that's what i'm bringing I, up where it's like the only choice we we are stuck with these two choices right and uh, again speaking plainly our officers are stuck with looking like an absolute fucking douchebag right. and spam tasing the shit out of somebody while they break mm-hmm. cuffs five fucking times because 15 seconds has passed by and it's reset and now they have to cuff the son of a bitch three more times right so they have a choice of looking like a douchebag or denying, you know, the R to the double P and just being like, get out of here. You're not allowed back here. Taser, handcuffed. Like that's the only options we have. Mm. And and once a son of a bitch is out of cuffs, that is at the minimum. If you take away looking like a douchebag, that is five to eight minutes of a foot chase, which by that time you could be all the way across half the fucking city on foot, right? And, by, and, and it's just like, what the fuck do you do? There's there's a little, like, there's multiple times in these situations, especially at the hospital, where I will just sit there and watch, and it looks like dog shit. And there's nothing we can do about that, you know? Um, well, so we have a hospital here. We have one. Yeah. And I don't want to... I don't either. Using it. And, and I, don't, I don't make that call anyways. But there was one built here for purposes of very high profile shootouts and stuff like that, not shop robberies or banks or, you know, dumb shit like that. But like a mass cast situation, you got officers down, you got suspects down where we were going to move them here. Right. Because at that point, shit has already hit the fan and that shit's on the wall and that shit's running down the wall. So it's already been going on. And it makes sense because you have multiple yeah. officers down. You have officers who just got shot who also need medical attention. So they're in the beds. They're getting up while other uh, people are getting uncuffed. And on top of that, if they don't get yeah. in the bed, their their legs are fucked up. They have sprained ankles. They can't run after people without jumping a hundred times, looking like a bunny rabbit. Yeah. So that 
that situation, you know, when it's something like that and it's already happened, it's already gone down just to have another shootout or people coming in trying to break people out. Like that's where a situation I think we could utilize this one. But again, that's not my call to make, right? A hundred percent. I hear you. So in that situation, I think we could use that. I think that would be a good place to do it. I agree. The other thing I, I need to ask, though, has anyone tried locking the doors? Because they should not. And I know you know that. They but. So we've had people attempt to lock the doors, and they are instantly uh -huh. told by myself or other officers to unlock those fucking doors. That's not going to okay, happen. Good. good. But good. with that being said, again, another frustrating that's, that's... thing, right? Because we're just, we're basically <laughs> allowing them to walk in. We're allowing them to walk up to the bed. They, it doesn't matter if we start tasing and cuffing them because we're back to square one with either looking like an ass, an asshole or okay. handcuffing them. You know. Well, uh, in in with the exception that I might be uh, having a hot take here. What about instead of using tasers, we let Black Betty sing? Well, then guns get pulled out and it turns into a gunfight in the hospital. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so exactly. it's, it's a lose, lose, <laughs> lose. And I promise you, if there's one thing, and this is coming from, you know, me being on that side for years and years and years, if there's one thing I hate more than getting spam taste is getting hit by a baton. And that's like, that's even worse, in my opinion. And I think I probably speak for that side as well. I don't think that they would be very welcoming to batons being pulled out. And then on top of that, if they can't pull a gun, they're just going to start punching. And you already know how that's going to look. Spam punch, spam punch, spam punch <laughs> into a corner. Spam kick, spam kick. You imagine Rami L. Like Raman getting in a fist fight. It's going to be the worst thing well, you've ever I, seen. I, I, I'll, be on, I'll be honest with you, though. Uh, so have you have you used a baton? Yeah, I have. First sergeant, uh, have you been hit by a baton? Oh, it fucking hurts. Mm, not anymore. It's a little softer than it used to be. Go ahead. A lot Crux, softer, I got a helmet on. Yeah, you ready? All right. Oh wow, that's not nearly as much as I thought it was going to yeah. be. First uh, yeah, cor correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't like isn't two and you be gone. isn't our yeah. MRPD uh, triage room supposed to be for situations like that? that? Well, that's what I was saying. Yes, but it was never clarified and never put into writing and never passed. So it was in talks, and then the talks kind of just fizzled out. And here's okay. my thing as well. Okay, I'm not against people doing an attempt to to break out their their buddies. Especially like if it's one guy and, you know, four people are waiting outside the hospital, the ambush or something like that, right? I would much, much, much rather, and I, I would like to bring this on to their plate, like, listen, hospital, no, no. We're not doing it at the hospital. There's tons of people. There's random Joe Schmoes that are escorting you. Like, it gets out of the parameters of even being containable for us. Like, it's just not possible to sit there. And... The fact that one fucking criminal has the confidence and the audacity to walk into a room full of fucking eight to 12 cops standing in there getting medical attention themselves and helping the 95s and has the balls to go up to an individual who's arrested and just unhandcuff them. That's something I would not dream yeah. of fucking doing. Like yeah. that, that is, that, that should not even be a fucking option. I, not along the lines of, yeah. you know, but it, they know how easy it is. I would much rather that's it, beyond us. It, what I'm saying yeah, is I, that... I would much rather that turn into a, you know, maybe they like the old times, maybe they request a transport and we do it that way. If they want to try and attempt to break their boys out, you know, I'd rather than pull a bus out us on Capitol Boulevard, pull a bus in front that of us too. and start shooting Ambush, from the of the you know, something literally is... anything other than just there it is. Me and, and there it is. Uncuffing somebody, you know? There it is. Because it not only is it just like, I understand you want to, you know, I, I just lose my time. You lose your time, your money, your time on top of your time, the stuff that all the time that it took to get your equipment. I, I understand that and I completely get it. I just want there to be a different way to do things in terms of breaking out your voice than running up and just uncuffing people and making yeah. us have to look like assholes in order to arrest you. That's all I'm saying. Well, why don't we put it into play today? If we manage to grab a couple of HVTs, why don't we give well, that a shot? Well, here's the thing. Um, I don't want to do something like that unless it's like, I, I, let me run it up like right now. You guys want? Yeah, I, I'll go I'll run ask. it up. Yeah. Um, 
I good call. Yeah, I, I would ask because that's something that's it's a big big change. Right? Mm-hmm, and people mm-hmm. that could be seen in multiple different ways, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I would run that up first and then see where it lands. I, to me though, it seems like first, but it's got to be very dependent on the situation, and there should be a minimum of somebody who can make that call. Like if you're not around, or I'm not around, or Lieutenant Fu, or whoever, somebody's not around then that call just can't be made, right? Somebody Because you, you've got to have somebody vetted to make a call like that, or else people are just going to abuse it. Call it every time, yeah. Yeah, exactly, uh, because it would be pretty difficult. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's, that's, pretty much, uh, that's pretty much everything I had. Okay, well, we have, cool. We I'll, hammered a few things up. I'll uh, send that up. I'll also see if I can't get us a bus. I have uh, one of the government officials transfer a bus in my name happen. if, uh, you know. A bus? A bus for the transport. So, oh, oh, full oh, buses oh, oh, yes. bus. so what I think yeah. we do is, is if we do get them up here, we offer them a transport, okay? Especially if the, you know, mass casualty situation. We offer them a transport. We transport with the same thing. We'll transport with the eight officers, go from MRPD straight down that road, and whatever happens, fucking happens. But at least there's still an opportunity there instead of just cutting all op- all, all opportunity off completely. You know, because there has yeah. to be a middle ground. It's just kind of silly. If, if, if we had any kind of foresight of you know let's say we're doing a transport of someone that's high value right and they usually roll with the crew that we know is probably going to try something we could probably get uh that bear cat because we have one problem with the bear cat is, is it's, it's completely bulletproof until the windows are broken the windows are yeah so the windows are, are bulletproof as well which right, i think you, it, i mean you, can, you can, well you can't shoot out of it no you cannot you cannot shoot out of so, it you got to get out, which means you're no longer bulletproof. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'm honestly, I'm down for either one because the only people who be driving a bus and a Bearcat is us anyways. So, and I know we all have a little bit of understanding in that situation, but I do think the bus is, in my opinion, I like the bus because let's just say for a criminal sit on top of a bridge and they're trying to uh, execute a plan in an area, it's a lot easier to to push a bus driver out and eliminate him instantly than it is to shoot a bulletproof bearcat. Well, let's have a cadet drive the bus. A hundred percent. Oh my God. What? All right, well, let me make some, uh, I, I sent that Bull up bastard. to the commissioner. I'm gonna make some calls and see what other people think as well. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted. You're going to sleep the though, to take one Jack? for the team and bite the bullet. No, no, I, I gotta clock off about 30 minutes or so and then I, I might even just do it this shift. Fuck yeah, yeah. that's all from me, Captain. Okay, you're, yeah, wait, you're going to sleep? The food? No, 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 I mean, uh, for this discussion, at least. Sweet. Okay, sounds good. All righty, I'll see you guys right. out there.